Good morning and uh, happy to be with you today. This is uh, with great pleasure that I welcome uh, for our new uh, resource uh, webinar, Gilbert Ongbo, member of Resource and uh, today president of the International Fund for Agricultural Development. Thank you to be with us, Gilbert. Uh, prior to your uh, appointment uh, as IFAD president, you served as prime minister of the Togolese Republic during almost five years, but also you've been deputy uh, director general of the International Labour Organization for years. Today, aside your uh, IFAD position, you chair UN Water, which coordinates 30 uh, UN entities and international organization working on water and sanitation issue. Uh, probably uh, it should be good as a short introduction and helpful that uh, you present to us uh, the International Fund. Uh, thank you so much, uh, um, um, Patrice. Uh, very, very nice to, um, to be uh, here. Good morning, good afternoon to uh, um, all of you. Um, International uh, Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD, uh, was set up uh, in, in 77 uh, after um, the food crisis uh, in the uh, early, 70, uh, early 70s. So what we do, we focus 100% of our activity on rural communities, investing essentially in agriculture, but we also do invest in non-farm um, um, activities for the communities, but we do um, essentially loan um, at uh, quite very, very, very concessional, uh, concessional term to the government and ensuring that those loans are used for the beneficiary, which are the communities. Obviously, the communities are not at all responsible for, repay, uh, for repayment. So today, when we mobilize one dollar from our uh, from donor community, we transform that uh, um, in, in in three to four dollars of our program of uh, loan because of the reflows we receive from time to time uh, um, from the earlier loan that we have uh, um, we have made. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Gilbert. And before uh, handing back to you again, of few words of presentation about uh, resource. Our think tank was, uh, was created, was born in fact in 2004 in Libreville during a, a founding symposium on the right to water and energy, a place of pre-debate and proposal. But first, uh, I have to say this is a great human adventure, which gathered together very different characters and expertise, NGO representatives, anchors, university professors, Policymakers, institutions, leader of the private sector, health experts, investment funds and foundation, and all of us, we share the deep conviction that access to basic essential services is a source of human development. We want to alert, we want to dialogue, recommend and expose on awareness raising with the ultimate goal to mobilize the attention of the decision makers and media on the questions related to access to basic services in emerging countries. Resource is a think tank with no political affiliation or economic or ideological dependence, working on conditions and solutions to ensure that everyone has access to these services. And in particular, in the countries where a large section of the population is still marginalized. So today, our thema, impact of COVID-19 and climate change on food system is a subject at the top of the agenda, particularly in emerging countries. First, as an opening uh, question to you, Gilbert, we'd like you to describe what is actually the general trend of hunger and poverty by these days of COVID-19 and climate change. Um, uh, thanks so much, uh, um, Patrice. You know, the, even before COVID uh, um, crisis, the pandemic, we were already uh, very much concerned about the, the, the state of uh, food insecurity. Um, the fight against hunger and, and against food insecurity has been going in a positive trend, i.e. the number of people um, suffering from hunger has been going down every year up to 2015. But since 2015, the situation has reversed. So we have more and more people um, suffering from, uh, from hunger and malnutrition. Um, and as we speak, uh, based on the report, every year there's a report that together, FAO, IFAD, 
and WFP, which is the World Food Program, UNICEF, and WHO, the World Health Organization, the five agency will produce a report on annual basis. The latest one for the, uh, um, that we produce indicate that we have 690 million people that are suffering from, uh, from um, food insecurity and, and hunger. And more and more, you have the obesity and uh, overweight um, dimension that is also adding. Um, so it tells you about the nutrition uh, um, side. Now we have the COVID, which is exacerbating the whole issue. Um, and WHO did an uh, estimate that uh, if um, um, we don't respond very swiftly, um, COVID could push additional um, 132 million people um, to um, food uh, in, in, in insecurity. So the situation was also quite very um, alarming before um, COVID and COVID is making it uh, even worse. Over to you. Thank you, thank you. And more specifically, uh, when we talk about the COVID-19 impacts, uh, what the key to resilience, also including put terms to your opinion? Uh, to, for, for, for resilience sake, uh, very clearly that we need to look at the different pillar of the value of the value chain. Um, starting with the need for us to increase the productivity, the productivity, and particularly, you know, it's important to focus a little bit on the small um, scale producers. Um, they produce globally, despite the commercial farm that we have all over the world, the small scale producers, we have about 500 million in the world, and they are responsible for half of the calorie that we consume. So when you look at that, um, you, to build their resilience, it's important to look at the, the different stage, as I was saying, starting from the productivity, and it, it, it could be the need for them to have better access to improve seed, um, the need for them to have access to uh, small-scale irrigation and dealing with the, uh, if, um, the, the water dimension uh, of the issue, access to water and the water management that is related to that for them to be able to, um, to have uh, access to storage facility and easy access to, uh, to the market, be it the local uh, or, 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 or the, uh, the, the international market. What is also quite important, and we don't talk about it um, um, maybe um, enough, uh, is the, um, the, the, this, the, the rural communities, to be able to perform in agriculture, they also need to make sure they are in good health. They also to make sure that they, they have um, drinkable water. Sure. And so they also need to make sure that the kid can go to school. Um, so what I'm talking about here is that while I'm talking to you about agriculture or, or, or food, it's important to put that in the global development challenge that it's important for them to have access to basic service, uh, um, services to be able to build resilience. So some kind of a social protection, social safety net is crucial for us to be able to build the resilience, to help building the resilience of um, the small scale producers. Thank you very much. You just prove here that you're not thinking by silo, I would say, uh, just for agriculture as such. Um, and, and probably to go more in detail, could you tell us a little bit on the impact on the score, small uh, scale farmers IFAD is working with um, in terms of global approach? The, uh, the, the, the COVID impact, uh, to be honest, it has been quite very, um, very hard. Uh, when we started um, back to um, April or, or so, um, almost on a daily basis, I had uh, calls from minister, uh, ministers of agriculture or ministers of rural development. Um, today, we have received a, a specific request for more than 75, um, 75 countries. Um, essentially, um, those requests are pushed, of course, in, in, in uh, discussion with the governments um, to repurpose our ongoing um, projects. So we have accepted to be flexible 
so that the objective of the ongoing project can be redirected to respond to the to the um, to the COVID uh, um, crisis, and that response was not necessarily on the humanitarian dimension. Mm -hmm. It was really on the impact. I will give you very a uh, concrete uh, example in uh, in, um, in 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 Senegal, for example. Um, Overnight, the the producers cannot be, they can, cannot send their produce to the local market because there was no pickup. There was uh, nobody to come and pick up the fruit and vegetables. Or um, it can also go to the access to the financial services. And we have cases, I believe, in um, in Bangladesh, where um, because they cannot sell and they cannot go out to for their daily. Um, um, the, the daily activities, all of a sudden they cannot make the payment to the microcredit institution at a local level. And therefore we need to re drive, uh, re re repurpose our project so we can pay maybe three months ahead to the microcredit institution so to give them that uh, um, um, flexibility. So you have different type of uh, needs uh, which vary from country to another country. And sometimes, even within the same country, you still have a lot of uh, um, um, a, a, a lot of, a, a variation from one region to um, to uh, another. So what we did, um, we created um, a stimulus uh, a stimulus uh, package to really help specifically um, making sure that we can um, they they can have easily um, access to to the seed and all the input, be it the seed or be it fertilizer. Um, for example, and also helping them um, to what, you know, and I believe it's not only in the agriculture sector, sector one of the major impacts we are suffering in terms of uh, uh, socioeconomic impact of COVID is the daily laborers, people that are just earning their life on a day-by-day -day basis. And the fact that they cannot go out on, on the, in the morning, go and earn, um, be it equivalent of one, two uh, uh, euro, um, what do they do? So the silver lining of COVID is that given that the whole transportation um, system were put to stop, so the importation and uh, export and import were clearly affected. So if you take Africa, for example, Sub-Saharan Africa, that imports on annual basis 35 billion US dollars of food products. And you can imagine that because of the stop that we have seen in the transportation industry, that has a direct impact on the importation. Therefore, people have no other choice that rediscover or giving more attention, uh, a prioritization of local production. So the, the, the COVID ironically has been helping the increase in the local um, production. So that is a positive side out of this difficult crisis we have. The, the bottom line is that the, 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 the help is at different levels. However, what is my, my concern is that the, the expectations are so huge that sometimes what you do, it looks like a drop in the bucket. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, you, how do you uh, foresee uh, this change of, uh, I would say, of a perspective uh, between what has been expected, expected as a very uh, dramatic health crisis in Africa, which turned to be much more a food and, uh, and, uh, and supply uh, crisis for everybody? How is it, how uh, IFAD is foreseeing uh, the, the 24 months to come? This is one of the, uh, uh, thank you so much for this uh, question. This is uh, one of the um, key issues that together we, uh, not only IFAD, but also together with uh, my colleague from FAO and WFP, what we call the Rome-based uh, agriculture agencies, we have been advocating that if we don't act swiftly now, um, the, the health crisis is, uh, is driving us straight to um, food, um, a food uh, a crisis. So clearly, uh, we are still very, very concerned. Um, so what we're calling for is this is the time to increase access to um, and to seed 
particularly uh, improve seed, access to fertilizers, helping the, um, the small-scale uh, uh, producers um, to, to have more um, storage facility, so to reduce the percentage of the food, uh, of the food, the, the food lost, um, and obviously access to the local and regional uh, market. So we are really pushing and advocating that, um, you know, in, in crisis like this, and one has to recognize um, all countries in the world are going to economic difficulties. Yeah. Um, yet, if you're not careful that at this stage, you reduce or you start reducing the, um, the um, ODA, the Official Development Assistance, that will be a disaster. So then the second dimension, which makes it even a bit more complicated. Um, obviously, you have the humanitarian side, but which is unavoidable. We need to be decisive on that. At the same time, you need to keep in mind that the humanitarian side does not provide necessarily the, the development side. So I would like to insist on the importance that we keep continuing investing for the development of the local production, um, increasing the productivity and the competitiveness of that production so that we can avoid the, um, the risk of a, a food crisis uh, um, in, the, in the year to come. So it's still an, uh, a major concern of us, for us. Okay, that's a very good transition to my, my second uh, tema, which is a climate change impact. Uh, uh, on this climate change, uh, why does it matter uh, for food system? And, and to which extent uh, you foresee a large impact in the years to come? Mm -hmm. Listen, for us, the, the, um, this COVID-19 uh, impact that we are dealing with come uh, as an uh, add-on, an addition to the climate change impacts we already are seeing in agriculture and um, particularly in the rural area. And when you talk about agriculture um, and, uh, and climate change, between that, for me, is particularly a matter of water. And you have to keep in mind that agriculture uses 70%, so 70% of fresh, um, fresh water. So we um, already, if it has been quite um, part of a lot of our investment, is the adaptation to the climate change for the rural uh, for the rural communities. So, uh, in our current ongoing, we are in the midst of our replenishment, and one of the key things that both our member states, both donors and borrowing countries, are insisting on is the importance for us to couple um, the our investment to um, in those four mainstreaming um, um, agenda item, i.e. The, the gender, the climate change, the nutrition, as well as the, uh, as well as the youth. So the climate change has to continue, and particularly in the context of the Paris, uh, the, the Paris Agreement, we have to make sure that, um, you know, more and more the way I see the thing is that our investment, like with, this, with the same stone, you're trying to kill many birds. <laughs> on, on that investing in a way that we can change the agricultural practices um, coming from the producers, that they can uh, increase their um, productivity and practice agriculture in a way that is sustainable, uh, in a way that minimizes or maximizes the efficiency of the, the use of water, um, maximize or optimize, this is the best term I should use, optimize the use of fertilizer, um, uh, whatever needed, et cetera, et cetera. So um, climate change um, for us is uh, one of, right now, um, we, we, every time we do our project, our commitment for the coming years is to make sure that all our projects in the next three years are climate change sens uh, sensitive. And you know very well, Patrice, that in, um, in, in the rural uh, um, area, generally over, uh, over the world, and uh, more particularly in, in Africa, um, the role that the women are playing for the, the rural economic survival is essential. That's why our investment always I'm focusing primarily on the, on the, on the women as, uh, as well. 
Over so to you, you. You're just trying, in, do, in saying so, you, you're addressing my next question about the best strategy to manage the water access uh, for agriculture and, and small scale farmers. Uh, this is one of the answers probably, because there is a, there is a context of an increasing and growing demand expen uh, with, in expansion. Um, and I would like to know for you, what are your views on the best appropriate strategy today to manage this water access? No, uh, listen, I would tend to, uh, first of all, I believe it's crucial, we cannot insist enough um, the issue of the water um, when, 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 when it comes to uh, managing agriculture, particularly in the, um, in the small scale producers context, in the rural context. I would like to argue that I'm very prudent not thinking that there is one um, preferred or best strategy. Um, I always try to, we try to be as pragmatic as one could be and take into account the country context, the community context on, on, on that. Something that for me and for IFAD is quite crucial. We never start an activity before making sure that the community it, uh, itself is really convinced that this is the way to go. That being said, that being said, there are different ways that come to play. One is, first of all, um, the, the capacity building, trying to really um, teach or making sure that the producers are more and more changing the behavior in a way that the, we practice the production processes in a way that is quite much more respectful of the, uh, of the environment. Another point for us that we are really pushing, if I is pushing, is the role that the digital will play or shall play in agriculture. And I want to uh, argue, and I do, I'm a strong believer that time has come to make technology much more, okay, right now we have a lot of cases where there's a lot of applications that, that are very helpful to get uh, market information or, or financial information, et cetera. But we really have to go beyond that. How do we make technology available and affordable um, for the use by the rural community in a way for them to be able to know that uh, the soil or their, on their property, what is the best type of production and they should be producing and what's the quantity of the water that they should be using? Um, how do we ensure by using technology for them to be able to predict uh, what's going to be the weather conditions on, 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 on et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, we can go on on that, but to, to me, the whole water management and how do we bring um, the different approach to ensure that the, uh, the productivity of the use of the water is, is increased is, going, is, uh, is, is crucial. Another point that is, is um, for me is linked to, um, to, to that is also how do we ensure that once you have dealt with the, the access to water issue, you know, the water is coming, if we take the fresh water, given that most of the agriculture we're talking about in Africa, for example, only 4%, uh, um, the irrigation is uh, essentially 4, 5%. So we know that the agriculture is essentially uh, rain fed. So, but that to, you need to have the access to the land. So the, that for me is automatically linked, uh, linked to the problem of access to the land right. And that again and again, when you put it in the gender context, is also very huge if we want to solve this uh, 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 this, pro uh, this problem. Excellent, excellent remark. Yes, uh, about this access to the, to the land and the right, the ownership, which uh, uh, remains uh, a hurdle for uh, for the growth of that. Um, a more general question to conclude before jumping to the Q and A: um, Is the public funding? financing, the public funding matching the long-term needs uh, for agriculture and rural development, and what would be your recommendation to, to really fill the gap? 
No, listen, the, the is clearly there is a big, uh, big gap. Um, if I take the most recent uh, um, research paper released by uh, um, CRS uh, 2030 um, data, uh, clearly it shows that between now 2020, and if we really want to reach the SDG um, 2, um, ending hunger, um, zero hunger by 2030, we need to invest um, 14 billion every year from, from the international community and 19, 19 billion um, from the beneficiary countries. So this is huge. Big and that's just for SDG 2. So you can imagine if you take the whole SDG. So my point is that we can only do it all together. And the, 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 just by looking at ODA or the public um, sector dimension, it would, that will not be sufficient. This is why um, uh, one of those who advocate um, seriously the fact that we need to broaden the resource base. And one of the, one of the means to do that is to bring in the, the private sector, is to bring in the private sector, not only um, from a, a financial resource perspective, but also from a, a know-how uh, uh, perspective. We also need to work more and more with non-state uh, different, apart from private sector, other non-state actors like major foundations and, uh, and, and, and so forth. So it's going to be quite important that the, the real partnership, the real partnership is going to be essential for us to, to, to increase the chance of bridging this huge, uh, this huge gap. Thank you, Gilbert. So now it, it, we're coming to the time of the of the questions uh, uh, from uh, from the participants, and I have a, a, a some of them. The first one I would like to mention is coming from Aziz uh, Sinasni, um, and and which is which is the following: Do you see a future movement of people migration, meaning with different consumption behaviors, affect the future food system in uh, in developing countries? Oh, uh, very clearly, yes. The the people movement will. Uh, I think it, it is already having uh, uh, impacts on, on on the uh, on the food system, and this is one of the reason why the UN system, the Secretary General of the has called for the food system summit uh, uh, next year. Uh, ne next year on 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 that. What um, we are we are realizing in more and more, even within countries, um, the the move from um, rural area uh, towards the uh, the major urban uh, um, center on one hand. On the other hand, the improvement, the global improvement of the living condition. Um, and thirdly, the awareness of the youth. Um, more and more, they are very, they, you can see an increase in the awareness from the, the, the youngsters uh, in terms of the direct relation about the quality of food, i.e. the nutrition side and the well-being side. All of that is already changing the pattern of the consumption. And the whole food system is adjusting to, is obviously adjusting to, um, to, to it. We're already seeing it, um, but that could only continue um, um, growing, that, that impact. And it's one of the things that uh, we, we will be looking at uh, in the Food System Summit. Thank you. And um, now a question coming from uh, our good friend, uh, Gérard Payen, um, who sent me these questions uh, almost an hour ago now, be just before we started. Uh, you, we know that uh, you have uh, this uh, uh, position of uh, IFAD president, but also you chair the UN Water, uh, which gathers these 30 uh, organizations around the, uh, around the subject of water. In uh, 2021, United Nations Secretary General will convene uh, a, a global food system summit uh, as part of the decade of actions to achieve these SGDs. Um, you member of both communities, I would say. Um, how do you see a possibility that the food system summit uh, raise the water issues as the right first priority uh, in terms of political position? That's quite a very good, uh, very good point and very good uh, um, question. 
One thing is for sure is that the water is going to be um, one of the major um, discussion items. Um, and our colleagues, uh, as the chair of the UN Water, um, as you said, uh, about 30, 33 agencies working together with 42 uh, non-UN um, partners on water-related uh, um, issues. We, they are already, UN Water is already organizing itself to provide its inputs and, and its contribution to the uh, ongoing debate of the, the food system. Um, that, being, um, th that being said, I think it's going to be, um, whether it's going to be considered as a right or not, this, uh, this part of the, the discussion, I want to guard myself at this stage. Um, however, what I do know is the, the nexus um, from agriculture, water, climate change, and nutrition is central and is already been uh, um, tabled by, uh, uh, by, by some on, on that. So, and I really will, uh, will uh, really welcome um, any contribution that the resource can obviously do in that regard. You sure will be on your side for that. Okay, I, uh, questions are coming fast now. Um, I would like to pick up one of, one of it uh, immediately. Let's try to, to um, I would say, have short answers because the questions are numerous now. Uh, this one is coming from Yotra uh, El Helal. Uh, which action can be undertaken to attract the youth towards agronomic jobs? So I, I think uh, um, this is one of the things that we need to we we are addressing in IFAD we, when we created um, the, the, the 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 private sector to really focus on bringing finance to the youth to develop their own. Um, agribusiness uh, um, um, project. So I think you, it's the, the access to finance. Secondly, is technology. In bringing technology, the use of technology and the access to finance, plus training in the business mentality is the way forward. And we have concrete example of those three put together uh, is, uh, is, is, is working. Thank you. Uh, a question now coming from François Lacour. Uh, is it uh, possible to improve the competitiveness in developing countries for agricultural products without a systemic approach changing the approach of other production in northern countries currently allowed by some subsidies? That's, that, that, I mean, the, 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 the question has its answer at the same time. The answer is yes. <laughs> Yeah, to be honest, the answer is, uh, um, uh, is yes. Uh, but the, the whole problem is also that sometimes to be able to solve that whole interaction and nexus, it takes time. So sometimes it's important to, um, to unpack it and just trying to um, address uh, one part of it uh, at the time. Otherwise, the, the answer, I fully agree, is a yes. Um, Jean-Patrice Poirier, coming to the, now to the land of fragmentation, one of the main obstacles to agriculture improvement of productivity in Africa, and you mentioned that, is the land fragmentation. What does uh, IFAD uh, organization is, is trying to solve this very big issue? Uh, first of all, I have to recognize that the problem is very, very complex because you, you, sometimes you have a a cultural dimension to it, you have a societal um, dimension to it, you have a legal dimension to it, and, 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 and generally speaking, um, a, a gender dimension to, um, to it. So what I was saying that we, uh, some of our activities can be directly uh, assisting countries um, in the policy changing um, to make sure that we can alleviate the problems. Uh, other way that we are doing it is also working with uh, other um, colleagues. For example, you know, uh, if I, we host uh, um, here uh, in Rome the International Land, uh, Land Coalition, which also try to bring the, the actors together and helping to see how in a specific country, how best to, um, to go about, uh, um, about it. So they, you have the human rights dimension to it, where our colleague from the human rights could um, also um, um, be um, involved. Thank you. I, I just would like to share with you at this point, uh, at this point in time, um, a comment, which is not a question, but a comment, which is going exactly in the sense uh, that you described to us uh, a few minutes ago. 
uh, interesting to see that uh, some of the participants are sharing absolutely this uh, integrated approach you talked about. Um, this person is, is just saying that uh, we should talk uh, of the major input which make the basic living needs satisfy as nutrition, water, electricity, education, and health as basics. And the COVID is seriously highlighting this trend. The international development and cooperation agreements should adopt an integrated approach taking into consideration this new food concept. Is it something which is, uh, uh, that's me who is now asking the question, are you now in IFAD trying to uh, uh, get a much more holistic approach than just being totally focused on, I would say, agriculture as such? No, uh, very clearly, you, you remember one of, the, um, one of my earlier comments was saying that while we talk about agriculture, farm and non-farm activity is important to put it in the global context. That's what I refer to in terms of the integrated um, approach. Um, the, the different uh, parameters to integrate, uh, one of the essential things I, did, I didn't hear you mention it in, in reading the comments is the gender dimension, is the gender uh, um, dimension that we need to add to, to that. Otherwise, uh, what we do, what we do is, 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 is very simple. The, I mean, very simple to explain, <laughs> not simple, simple to do. Um, you know, at the, at the country level, don't forget that right now, together with the rest of the UN system, together with the international financial institutions, the IFIs, um, you, you assist the country developing their national plan to respond to the SDGs. And out is only out of that plan that you see okay, who is going to do what, who is going to uh, invest or help the country invest uh, um, in what. So in a, two, in, a, in, in a nutshell, what I will say, uh, Patrice, if we do not consider the integrated approach, we will only fail. Hmm. Clear crystal answer on that. Uh, another question coming from Bruno Garen uh, Alabadi, uh, who would like to know what is your view on Agra program? It doesn't seem to have developed resilience of uh, small farmers, but creates more dependency to seed and feeder product. Is it a sustainable, uh, do you believe that this is sustainable to your viewpoint? No, I, I think obviously the question to also ask to a um, colleague from Agra, I know very well uh, Agnes uh, and Kalibata, the, the, um, the head of Agra and uh, ongoing, she's also the, uh, the, the, the special envoy of the Secretary General for the Food System um, Summit. You know, uh, to me, uh, Africa continent should look positively at the uh, Agra initiative. Uh, obviously, if after many years, uh, if they, there are some opinion here and there that need to, to uh, create adjustment, uh, it, anybody need to adjust from time to time. But clearly, the, the, the in fine, the objective is to bring, to help countries, and I think they are operating in, they are focusing in 10, 15 countries, is to help those countries developing their own capacity um, using as much as possible science, uh, science and science-related um, data to really lift up their, uh, their, their agriculture on that. Sometimes they, you, you hear some type of criticism, which um, for me are not necessarily founded, and therefore I, I want to guard against, uh, against that. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Gilbert. Uh, I think uh, you have time constraints uh, on, 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 your, on your agenda. Um, I would like first uh, to thank you very much for your, uh, for your presence and your answers, uh, which were extremely uh, helpful. Um, I uh, would like to say this, and I will do it in French. Merci beaucoup, mon cher uh, Gilbert. Uh, we uh, look forward uh, to have your participation as member of resource for the next uh, webinar to come. The next one will be on the 30th uh, of uh, November, uh, a very interesting subject. Uh, Gilbert, merci encore une fois et à très bientôt. Merci à tous les participants. Je vous souhaite une bonne soirée. Merci. Uh, thank you all.